Hello, I am Beth Sullivan Woods, Precinct D, Select Board. And through this presentation, I will be introducing you to Article 21. The focus of Article 21 is to request permission to update our Alcohol Licensing Special Act. This slide presents the specific wording of Article 21, Motion 1, which continues on to the next slide. The overall objective of Article 21, Motion 1 is to ask town meeting to authorize the select board to petition the general court for special legislation, which authorized said board as the local licensing authority to issue licenses for the sale of wine and malt beverages only, or all alcoholic beverages to be drunk on the premise under section 12 of chapter 138 to restaurants and function rooms with a seating capacity of less, less than 50. The language continues, but that is the crux of the focus of Article 21. Currently, by our special act, the town is restricted in terms of being able to grant alcohol licenses for either beer and wine or for all alcoholic beverages to restaurants and on-premise service to establishments that have a seating capacity of at least 50 seats. And this article requests that that 50 seat minimum be lifted. So I'm going to take you to the next slide so you can see how this, the language in the existing legislation would be modified. On this slide is the continuation of the motion language for Article 21, Motion 1. I would call your attention to Sections 1 and 2 as you look at the motion language. The specific change that is being requested is um, Section 1 covers all alcohol licenses and Section 2 covers the issuance of wine and malt beverage licenses. In both sections one and two, the language has changed from with a seating capacity of 50 or more to the wording with any seating capacity. And I will go into that in more detail, but that is why you are seeing in motion, in the motion language, the detail around the requested language change. So now that I've taken you through the technical motion language, I'd like to take a step back and walk through the background and how we got to bringing this article forward and why we believe it is an appropriate recommendation that town meeting approve. So by way of background, as I have discussed with you when we looked at the previous two slides, this motion requests that town meeting authorize the select board to seek permission of the general court to change the minimum seating requirement for common victual or alcohol license eligibility. Specifically, the motion removes the minimum seating requirement for common victual or establishments, i.e. restaurants, and provides more flexibility to attract new restaurant types. As I believe most of you are aware, the current seating minimum in order to be eligible to apply for a common victual or license with alcohol or beer and wine in Wellesley is 50 seats. This seat requirement was last reevaluated 10 years ago. So prior to 2011, the minimum seat count was 100 seats in an establishment. And if you did not have 100 seats, then you could not apply for any type of alcohol, beer, or wine license. This article that is being brought forward is important in that it reduces the seat, seating requirements for establishments. It does not, however, change the number or types of licenses that are available to be issued in Wellesley. It also does not change any of the licensing requirements for the other types of alcohol related licenses that are issued in the town of Wellesley. And specifically, it has no 
impact on licenses that are issued to clubs, dining halls and educational institutions, or food and specialty store licenses. As we are all aware, the market dynamics have shifted very dramatically in terms of the economic situation and profile at the retail level in the last 10 years. And these changes have really come to be in very sharp focus over the last year. With regards to the retail setting and the restaurant setting at a more macro level, there are several key indications that we think are important to keep in mind when evaluating this particular proposal and why we are bringing it forward. The first is that in looking at what's going on in the restaurant scene and restaurant establishments, there has been a notable shift from larger format restaurants towards smaller, more entrepreneurial concepts. The second kind of element at this more macro level is that there is a trend towards chefs seeking out suburban locations. And this is being noted in a couple of different kind of directions. First, what we're seeing is chefs looking to move their restaurants from the city into the suburbs. And also we are seeing chefs desiring to start up their first restaurant or after having taken a hiatus, start a new restaurant in the suburbs. The third component of this macro trend is what's going on with bricks and mortar retail. And retail is really in um, very significant transition. I think that's the diplomatic way to say it. And as part of that transition and shifts to more online and retrenchment of the larger retailers, the emergence of food establishments taking priority as anchor tenants rather than traditional retail stores is something that is occurring quite broadly in the community and across the country. So with those as the more macro trends that are important to keep in mind that have really come into quite stark focus over the last year or so. The second thing to keep in mind is that when we look very locally at what's going on in Wellesley and what's going on very specifically in our downtown di districts, what we see is significant vacancies. So we are experiencing the pain in the shift that's going on at a more macro level very locally. And currently there are 15 vacancies in Wellesley Square that have been out there for quite a bit. Wellesley and its shopping districts have a very strong kind of codependency and restoring the vitality of our shopping districts overall and Wellesley Square specifically is really a very high priority for all of us. At the select board level, we are really taking several steps to look at how we can support rejuvenating our downtown districts and our shopping areas and what that means in terms of what we need to look at in terms of our legislation, our policies, our procedures. We are also looking at doing revitalization in terms of hardscape features and layouts. This particular proposal is one of many different things that we are looking at. And it is rooted in the fact that when we did an analysis of our current legislation and license granting authority, for restaurants specifically, because they are a piece of the economy that is um, looking for retail locations now and is an opportunity with all of our vacancies. 
it became clear that our legislation and our license granting authority is hampering our ability to attract quality restaurants. We have heard this consistently from chefs, we've heard it from leasing agents, and we have heard it from our commercial landlords. And the theme has been that we are at a competitive disadvantage. We did verify this, and in looking at several of our peer communities, it is clear that where we have a 50 seat minimum in order to apply for a liquor or beer and wine license, many of our peer communities have no seating requirement. And those communities include our neighbors in Needham, Sudbury, Concord, and Wayland. Other communities, which we consider benchmark or peer communities, have substantially lower seating requirements. Those include Lexington with 18 seat minimum and Winchester with a 24 seat minimum. The fourth major point is that in looking at our alcohol licenses that are available in Wellesley, more than half of them are going unused. Wellesley has the authority to issue up to a total of 29 alcohol licenses to restaurants. And those licenses are a combination of all alcohol as well as wine and malt only licenses. Currently in Wellesley, we have 13 licenses that have been issued and are currently being used and 16 that are available. Of those 16, 10 are all alcohol and six are wine and malt only. In doing outreach and research in the community, we have found that there is a strong interest in bringing more restaurant diversity and attractive dining options to the town. And we did not take this proposal lightly. We did a fair amount of outreach, as did various others in the community. And I've listed here six different initiatives that went on to help us understand what would make sense and where there was a need. We did interviews informally with our various commercial building owners in the retail districts, and we also spoke to area leasing agents, including those that specialize in the restaurant market. They indicated that Wellesley is at a competitive disadvantage, that they are being approached by restaurant concepts and they are presenting them with opportunities in other towns rather than here because our regulations do not allow us to meet their need. This, and they felt that this change would help them bring more opportunities into the town that would fit with our character and improve our vitality. The second is that we have been in ongoing discussions with the existing merchants, retailers, and restaurants in town, and they have all been very supportive of this move and believe it would help Wellesley kind of revitalize as we are coming out and looking forward to the next economic cycle. The third thing is, as I believe most people are aware, the Wellesley Chamber of Commerce has um, folded itself into been subsumed by the Newton Needham Chamber. And the Newton Needham Chamber covers Wellesley, Watertown, Newton, and Needham business communities. And they held a forum to talk about this proposal and obtain input from the business community across the, their catchment area, as well as the, um, so the broader business community, as well as the restaurants, and they invited the um, residents to their forum. And that was conducted in March. In addition, they have a subcommittee focused specifically on restaurants that we got feedback on in terms of seating, counts and where the trends were. And they really, they were quite helpful in clarifying for us that restaurants really can be successful in all different seating sizes. And that 
where in the old model, having a certain number of seats was more a predictor of stability and success. And now with the number of different concepts and formats, mm. you're seeing very small restaurants being quite successful with low seat counts, as well as larger restaurants. So that was terrific feedback for us and really clarified the rationale for dropping the seating count and really working with the different concepts that come in and being much more agile and open-minded in terms of looking at what's going on in the market. The fifth thing that we did was we posted and communicated through news and announcements and through the various media channels that in March, we had an, a select board meeting where we had this particular article on the agenda and we sought public comment. We had a number of business owners of non-retail businesses, non-restaurant businesses, restaurant businesses, merchants and residents come and give us feedback on this particular article that was resoundingly positive. And the last is that over the last probably six months or more, there have been sporadic resident surveys put out, particularly through Facebook, to get feedback on what residents would like to see downtown. We have also partnered with Babson and they have been doing surveys and looking at what the community is looking for and more restaurants and different types of restaurants is certainly one of the themes that has been emerging. The most important takeaway from all of these different forms of outreach and research has been that we have not been hearing any negativity or concern that the feedback has been extraordinarily supportive toward this direction. And with that, the select board requests your favorable action on this motion. Thank you very much.